In this part, we shall see the early materials for information regarding printing, counting numbers, measuring time, and distance. Here we shall see how the early methods of printing were developed. This method lasted for several centuries in China, Korea, and Japan until modern printing machines were invented. The methods used were wooden block stencils. First, the wood is cut in appropriate size and blocks are boiled and steamed. The surface of the wooden block is then scraped to obtain a smoother surface. The manuscript letters are then carefully written on the paper and then glued onto the wooden block. The letters are then carved using a fine chisel and the entire block is carefully examined for any remaining mistakes. The engraved surface with manuscript letters is then smeared with ink and blank paper is placed over it and pressed so that the ink is transferred to the paper. If two to three books have to be printed like this, it would have been a very meticulous task to prepare wooden block stencils. But imagine if 200 to 300 books are to be printed, this method was indeed a great revolution. Some of the ancient Buddhist texts like Tripitaka were printed and spread over entire China, Korea and Japan and other oriental countries. Later, it is spread to the Southeast Asian countries as well. Some of the wooden script blocks are shown here in this picture. The first two in the left are in Chinese language, whereas the right two are in Korean language. This is one of the famous UNESCO World Heritage Site in Daegu in South Korea. Here a collection of 80,000 blocks containing entire Tripitaka literature of sacred Buddhist teaching and are preserved in Hainsa temple. This is still the largest and unbroken collection in entire Korean peninsula. As gradually the method of writing appeared and invented, the languages also appeared. Some of the main language families are shown here. Every language got its own script of writing and storing information and shown is this map. Here in this slide, the map of main writing systems of the world today are shown and listed on the left side of this slide. As we saw earlier, the ancient people used pebbles, hash marks on the cave walls or earth or tie knots on the ropes to record counting or measuring lengths. The ancient Mesopotamians invented abacus to keep a track of counting numbers. This was a primitive device to perform simple mathematical calculations like addition and subtraction. Later on, it traveled to China and other part of the world and people learned to carry out multiplication and division as well. This is believed to be one of the very first information processes to store numbers temporarily and perform calculations. It continued to be an important tool throughout Middle Ages. The earliest known uniform systems of weights and measures seems all to have created at the same time during 4th to 3rd millennia BC among ancient peoples of Egypt, Mesopotamia and Indus Valley civilization and perhaps also at Elam in Iran. Capacities of containers such as goods or clay or metal vessels which were filled with plant seeds and then counted as measured to volumes. For weighing were invented, seeds and stones served as standards. For instance, the karat is still used as a unit for gems were derived from the carob seeds. Harappan civilization also used beam balances and standard weights to measure different kinds of weights and to measure lengths, they use the ivory sticks. In India, the length was first measured with forearm, hand and fingers. And time was measured by periods of the sun, moon and other heavenly bodies. Other measuring units were dhanush or length of the bow, krosha or 1.91 miles and yojana or 13 km or 8 miles. They also used cubit unit. 
which is the length of the forearm from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger. Subsequently, one half cubit is the length between the tip of the thumb to the tip of the little finger. One sixth cubit was palm of the hand and one twenty fourth cubit was the digit or width of the middle finger. In Egypt, there was uses of royal cubit, which was a standard cubit enhanced by an extra palm and they used this unit for measuring the, to construct their buildings and monuments. Other units namely foot, inch and yard originated from this but the real sources is still not known. The Greeks and Romans inherited the foot from Egyptians so they inherited the science of writing and architecture from Egypt. Romans made a little more alteration. A Roman foot was 12 inches and equal to 18.5 millimeter. Subsequently, the Roman mile posse was 1000 paces or double steps and a Roman mile was 5000 feet or 1480 meters. This unit of measurement reached to England much later, that is 1558 to 1603 during the time of Queen Elizabeth I rules. A British mile was 5 to 8 zero feet or 1609 meters or 8 furlongs. They later introduced yard which is equal to 0.9144 meter. Rulers made of ivory were in use by the Indus Valley Civilization period prior 1500 BCE. Excavation at Lothal which is as old as 2400 BCE have yielded one such ruler calibrated to about 1 16th of an inch that is 1.6 millimeter. Historians hold that the Mohenjo-daro rulers is divided into units corresponding to 1.32 inches which is equal to 33.5 millimeter and these are marked out in decimal subdivisions with an amazing accuracy which is within 0.005 inches or 0.13 millimeter. The ancient bricks used in the architecture and establishment were found of uniform dimension throughout the region that correspond to these units. Trade was largely dependent upon barter system in ancient times until currency was invented. Indus Valley people were known to have invented currency coins trade seals as well as administration seals to tag their goods for sale to distant places inland and overseas. Mesopotamians and Egyptians also used clay tablets as trade seals. Currency coins of metals such as copper, bronze or gold or silver were introduced much later. It was China which first introduced paper currency notes for trade and is still in use. Coins and currency notes carry information about the value of the world as well as the kingdom. Now we shall see a more interesting topic that is measurement of time. A simple apparatus was invented by early civilization people for measuring time during the day. It was sundial. Sundial was in popular use in almost every civilization. A simple stick in the ground and its shadow could tell time. But what to do on the rainy and cloudy day? For such a time, Indians had water clock or ghatika yantra. In this apparatus, a small hole is created at the bottom of the metal bowl and placed in a large vessel containing water and graduation marks were etched at the surrounding walls of the bowl. As the bowl is placed in the water containing large vessel, water starts flowing in. The time taken by the water to flow in and touch the graduation marks one by one could tell exact time during cloudy or rainy day or even night. The description and remnants of the water clock is found in other civilizations as well. It was designed in a modified form as shown in the picture. This is a dripping water clock. The hole is made at the top container and filled with the water that measures the time by dripping the water outside. The other is a container with no holes at the bottom, measures the time by letting water drip inside. The former is dripping water clock and another is filling water clock. Another primitive clocks were the candle clocks and the incense stick clocks. Candles were used to be graduated as shown in the picture. Similarly, incense sticks installed 
on a graduated metal surface where burnt would tell how much time have elapsed. For such apparatuses, uniform size and diameters of the candles and incense sticks were a prerequisite condition and professionally mastered. In medieval times in Arabian world was invented an elephant clock and in Europe rolling ball clock. These two were masterpieces of mechanical engineering. Various components of the elephant clock are housed on the top and inside the body of the elephant. A giant ladle is placed in a water reservoir inside the elephant's head with a hole at the bottom. It takes 30 minutes to fill this ladle as adopted from the water clock and served as a timing mechanism. When the ladle is pulled, it would sink. This in turn pulled the string and rotate the gears at the top with a bird releasing a ball to drop in the mouth of a serpent, which would swung down pulling the string and causing the elephant rider to pound a drum, signaling an hour. The inventor of this apparatus, Al Zazari, made several other designs with water clock mechanism as a basis. Another is an electromechanical clock, a rolling ball clock, which was invented in 1970s. However, the idea of atomic clock already appeared and reconstructed in 1955 with a newer concept of second. The latter required sophisticated environment to house the apparatus and we shall see that in detail in later lectures. The clock shown here is an electromechanical clock with using steel balls to indicate exact time. There are three main rails which are numbered for hours and minutes. The bottom rail represents hours whereas the middle and upper rails are used for representing minutes. An electric motor scoops up a ball every minute. Every five minutes the top rail will dump and redeposit a ball onto the second rail. Every hour the upper and the middle rails dump and one ball is transferred to the bottom rail and add to an hour. Apart from measuring time, early civilization people were interested in astronomy as well. Some of the prehistoric sites are there in reference in Egypt, India and Mesopotamia as well in China. The primitive observatories are more like stones arranged in large circles to observe and create sky maps with positioning of the stars and the planets. Later on, astrolabe was invented and used by navigators to measure the attitude altitude above the horizon of a celestial body. One of the oldest observatories from 7th century AD is still surviving in Korea. It was used for stargazing and situated in Gyeongju. In India, there had been huge number of studies right from the very beginning of the civilization, even when telescopes were not invented. Indians pioneered and excelled in this science and the oldest book on astronomy, Surya Siddhant, was written by Indians and it is considered to be 6 millennial BC old. It has 14 chapters and 500 verses, a much complicated book which continues to intrigue people about its antiquity. Based on the description in this book, many observatories were installed in different ancient universities which later on destroyed by Islamic invaders or colonial rulers. One of the four surviving observatories from medieval times is still functional with its hugely installed architecture at Jaipur. It was world's largest sundial which can tell time with an accuracy up to 20 seconds. Here are some more pictures of sundials with a specific precision of time measuring program during summer and winter seasons. Here are some more apparatus of measurement. We shall now continue to the part 8 of this lecture.